Wednesday night church. Hey, there's just something about Wednesday nights at Abundant Living, even when it's church at home. Listen, we're so excited that we get to worship God together, we get to receive communion together, and we get to rally and gather around God's word together tonight. And so if you've been with us the last couple of weeks during the, living the quarantine dream, or maybe it's your first time watching us tonight, welcome to church. Hey, listen, if it's your very first time joining us tonight, we would love the opportunity to connect with you and just welcome you into this abundant life. The the way we can get connected is let us know you're watching for the very first time by texting us. The number is on the screen here. Just let us know it's your first time. Our team would love the opportunity to connect with you and just make sure that your experience with us as a church and as a church family is a great one. Now listen, we are a church family and so church isn't just the live stream. We can actually have church all day, every day and there is church content for every member of your family. Kids, we've got you covered. Check out Kingdom Kids on our church Church app. We've got something for your teenagers at Prime Essential. They've got incredible content on YouTube and the app. And hey, listen, if you're a college student or a young adult, we've got something for you too. You can check out Prime Culture at This Prime Culture on Instagram. Really, there's something for everyone to stay connected to church during this time. Hey, another way that we'd love for you to stay connected is to be a part of our connect groups. Yes, our connect groups are still happening. We're meeting over Zoom. And I'll tell you what, man, we might not be able to meet face to face, but just being able to see each other's smiles on a Zoom session is a game changer. And so you can join one of our connect groups via the app, all right? And so whatever's happening in your life, we're praying that God is still near you, that you sense his goodness. And listen, that you don't walk this path alone if life is just a little tough and not playing along during this season. We have all kinds of things to care for you and your family. One of the ways that we're caring for our church family during this time is that we're still doing our Celebrate Recovery group. That's happening on Tuesday nights at at 6.30. Check out our church app for more information on Celebrate Your Recovery. This is not a time to walk through life's difficulties by yourself, and we have a great team of people who we're caring, we're connecting, and we're seeing our church family choose life and walk in victory. So tonight's going to be an awesome night. Why don't we stand to our feet? Let's get ready to worship out loud. Let's open our hearts, our spirits, and let's just get ready to receive the presence of God. Come on, stand up. Let's worship together.
church family, every time we gather together, we always take a moment to pray over people's needs. Maybe you're watching today and you have a prayer request. Maybe something is going on in your life personally or in the life of someone that you love. If they're with they're with you right now, I would love it if you would just kind of put your arm around them. If it's for you, would you just touch your body wherever you need healing or stretch your hand out to the screen? Let's just all come in agreement together today that God is gonna move on our behalf. You know, the Bible gives us tremendous promises, but one of my favorites is that God, the Bible says that all of God's promises are yes and amen. We can say amen to the truth that God has healed us, delivered us, and gives us an assurance that we can have a better life. Let's pray today. Father, I just pray for anyone who is watching today. I pray for each and every one of their situations. Father, you know the very needs in their life. In fact, the Bible says that you know so much about us that you even know the number of hairs on our head. Father, if you care about the tiniest details like that, then surely you care about the challenges and the situations that we are facing. Father, I thank you that we can come boldly before your throne of grace today, knowing that you hear us in our time of need and that at your throne of grace, we find mercy and help. So Father, today, I thank you that as we pray, you are moving in each one of these people's lives. We declare that healing is taking place in people's bodies. I thank you, Father, that people's financial situations are being taken care of. Father, you are supplying their very need. Lord, I thank you that you are reaching into people's minds and spirits that your peace that passes all understanding is comforting them even as I pray. Father, I thank you today that you know what needs to be done and that as we join our faith together, Father, miracles are being set into motion. And lastly, Father, we stand together as a church family. We rebuke this evil virus. We say that it is coming to an end. We command it to cease and desist. Father, we thank you that we can claim, Father, that already your restoration is being set into motion for our lives, for our city, for our country, and for all of those that we love. In Jesus' name, Amen. All right, church family, let's go ahead and worship some more. Come on, I just want to invite you to lift your hands, to lift your voice and sing with us right now. Come on, let's worship Jesus. Yeah, we worship you, Jesus. Come on, we sing. Oh, the rules of my Savior skies broken for all to see by his love he would set us free the cross is our victory oh the blood washes white as snow strip me of all of my wrongs once condemned to a sinner's life, hallelujah, my past is gone. Oh, how great my salvation, Jesus died to set me free. I will praise His name forever, for the cross is our victory. Stripped of its 
Jesus died to set me free. I will praise His name forever, for the cross is our victory. Thank you so much for joining us at church on this beautiful Wednesday. I hope you know that wherever you are, that we love you, we cherish you, we thank God that you're a part of our church family. There's people watching from all over the world. We can't wait to be back in church. Man, I can't wait until all this is over to say hi to you and high five you if we're allowed to and hug you and there may be some new normals, but I just can't wait to be back and worship in the house of God with you. But for now, this is what we have, so we're gonna make the most of it, right? You do the best you can with what you have, and that's what we're doing. So thank you for being a part of our abundant family. I have the privilege now of talking to you about your giving, your sowing, your generosity, and I just wanna say thank you to those of you who have continued to sow seed, your tithe and your offering during this time, Many of, uh, uh, of you have been affected financially. I don't want you to feel any pressure. If you've lost your job or something like that, please listen, let's put our trust in God that he is the God who restores. And when God restores your finances back, you can rejoin what we call the giving family. But to those of you that are still working and, and still functioning and uh, without having been affected financially, you can sow your seed today. You give your tithe and offering. Why do we give? We give to honor God because we know that everything we have came from God. And so we live with grateful hearts, recognizing that he is our source and our supply. And let me just remind you of that. God is your source and your supply. He is Jehovah Jireh, the one who provides. Let's remember that. Let's never forget that our source is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So let's prepare to give now. In a moment, you'll see the ways to give. Most of us now are giving via text to give or on the app. And thank you for doing that. It's really honestly the easiest way. It's the most convenient. If you'd like, you can mail your in your contribution or even drop it off at the office. We do have someone there. Uh, regular business hours, Monday through Friday. Let me tell you about a couple things also. We're here for you. I hope you know that. We've been telling you about this great program we've started. If you need help, if you need prayer or counseling, if you're in desperate need or you know someone who is, we want to be there for you. Would you just email us at care at alfc.com? And if we can help you, we will. If not, we'll be honest with you. We'll just tell you the truth. And we'll even try to connect you with someone who can. But most of the time we can. So email us there. All right, before we go back into the service, let's just pray over our giving. Father, we honor you and glorify you. We praise you and we thank you that you are our source and our supply. I believe that you are laying out provision for our church family to be able to continue to function. I believe that you are making a way for them. You are opening doors for them. God, our trust is in you. Our hope is in you. Our faith is in you. And we believe that you are supplying for us. We honor you with our giving. We thank you for it. And as we give today, we believe that two great things are going to happen simultaneously. That you are going to meet the needs of our church 
and you are going to meet the needs of the men and women within the church. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you again for your faithfulness in your giving tonight. God bless you.
Hi, church family. Again, thank you for being with us tonight. How many of you love the Lord on this beautiful Wednesday? Amen. And how many of you are so glad that God is on your side today? Amen. Praise the Lord. Why don't we just confess that? One, on the count of three, say, God is on my side. One, two, three. Come on, say it. God is on my side. Praise the Lord. Well, I have the privilege of sharing tonight's message with you. We're going to continue in the vein of thought that we've been on in the past few services on the power of love, truly the power of God's love. 1 Corinthians chapter 17, verse 13. It's a very famous piece of scripture. And it says here, it says, and now abides faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love. My dad calls this the big three of the New Testament. Faith, believing and speaking. Hope, a positive expectation for your future. And what does faith do? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, right? And love. Now, it goes on to say, but the greatest of these is love. Isn't that interesting that God pointed out these three things, but then took love out and said, love is the greatest one of the three. I think it's because of this. Well, truly, love is what gives you eternity. You know, when you're in heaven, you won't need faith anymore. When you're in heaven, you won't need hope anymore. But you will stay in heaven for eternity because of the love of our heavenly Father. But you know, love truly is a powerful thing. Love has power. I would venture to say that we have all experienced at some point in some form, the power of love. You know, there's no force, there's no sentiment, there is no feeling on this earth more powerful than the power of love. We all know it. We all know how powerful it can be. Really, love can even be life-changing. The love of God, the love of a friend, the love of a spouse, the love of a parent, the love of a child or a grandparent. Love can affect you in the most deep and profound ways. It can change your life. It can change your mood. It can change your entire focus. It is a powerful force. And tonight, we're going to continue exploring why it's so powerful. We're going to look at one of the areas of what makes love so transformational. If you have your Bible, would you turn to 1 John chapter 4? I also just want to let you know that my outline is on our church app. If you don't have our church app, go download it. It's free. It's really a great resource for our church family. Just search Abundant Living in the app store, and you'll get all the teachings that we've done at our church for the past two or three years, all the information about the church. There's great, uh, there's an entire section for our kids' church, our youth and young adults. They have incredible content. We've got something for everybody. So why don't you download it, follow along on my app. All the scriptures are there. It's, it's on my outline. All the scriptures are there. It's really fantastic. 1 John 4, verse 7 through 8. It says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is is love. Isn't that interesting? God is love. Now, I want to remind you, you cannot separate God from who he is. And God is love. There is no separating that. You cannot say that God hates you. No, he cannot hate you because he is love. You cannot say that God condemns you because That is not from love. God is love. And here's the amazing reality, is that God's love is on the inside of you. Well, how could I say that? Well, if you are a child of God, you have made Jesus Lord of your life, and he is in your heart, the Bible says. And where God is, all of who he is is with him. So if God is love and Jesus lives on the inside of you, then God's love is in you right now. Isn't that incredible? 
Isn't that amazing to know that you can love like God loves? You can be a recipient of God's divine, unconditional, unwavering, unrelenting love. You have it inside of you. Oh, praise the Lord. Isn't that incredible, church? That God's love sits on the inside of you. Now, here's the thing about God's love. His love produces. And tonight, we're going to look at one aspect of that. John 3, 16. You know this scripture. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that any person would believe in him could have everlasting life and would not perish. Listen to the words. For God so loved that he gave. And then came eternal life. So God's love produces his giving And the giving caused us to receive. God loved, God gave, we received. God loved, God gave, we received. God loved, God gave, we received. The evidence of love is generosity. Did you know that? Did you know that the evidence, the evidence, the production, Producing of love. What love produces is generosity. For God so loved that he gave. For God so loved that he gave. God loved, he gave, and we received. The reality is, my, my family, is that we are God's children because he gave us a Savior. Let's look at some more scripture. John chapter one, verse 12. It says, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become his children. So if you have received him, he gave you the right to become his child. Now watch this. This scripture is incredible. Second Peter one, verse three through four. It says, God's divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. God's power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Now, I just want to take a moment here and remind you that God is the God of life. He is the God of life. He is not the author of death. I know there's been talk and People have been saying that God brought this virus to to get our attention, to wake us up. Now, we might be more awake to God, but God did not bring this virus to get our attention. The devil brought this virus. Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come to give you life and to give you life more abundantly. God's love has given to us all things, all things that pertain to life and godliness, the abundant life and the eternal life, a life of love, joy, peace, and happiness, a life of favor, wisdom, success, and prosperity, a life of hope and faith, a life of victory, a life of freedom, a life of deliverance, a life of restoration and recovery, and the enemy wants to steal that life from you. But church, be reminded today, be encouraged tonight. Listen to me, church. The God you serve has given to you all things that pertain unto the amazing life that Jesus died on the cross for you to live. If you're watching right now, just type amen in the screen. Hit the like button. Hit the heart button. Shout a good amen at home. And and be in agreement that we serve the God of goodness, the God who has given us all things that pertain to the abundant life. And we will not be robbed. We will not be dismayed. We will not be shaken by what's going on. Our faith is in him. Our hope is in him. And we know that all his promises are yes 
and amen to those who believe. Oh, the circumstances may seem difficult. The mountain may seem big. The world may say it's impossible. But don't forget, church, we serve the God of the impossible. And what is impossible to the world is possible to Jesus Christ because he overcame the world. His promises are, are, have not been disqualified because of what's going on in our society right now. Church, listen to me. Your marriage can still be happy. You can still uh, uh, get a promotion or get raises in your future. You're gonna still open that business that's been in your heart. You're gonna recover. Healing is coming your way because we serve the God who never fails. We serve the God of hope and his hope does not disappoint. Amen. Come on, let's keep reading. This scripture actually gets better. Isn't that amazing about God? You would think that'd be the end of that scripture, but it's not. Check this out. It says, his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. Exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature of God. Isn't that interesting? We have God's divine nature on the inside of us. You could put it like this. You have God's DNA. Isn't that interesting? Now, what is God's DNA? God's DNA is love. God is love. Therefore, you are love. You are love. So if God loved and God gave, you too can love and you too can give, because generosity is the evidence of love. Look at Psalm 37, verse four. It says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Isn't that amazing? Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And the desires of your heart, what will he give you? He will give you life. He will give you godliness. He will give you exceedingly great and precious promises. Amen. Here's another amazing scripture. I love this scripture. It's 1 Timothy 6, verse 17 through 19. It says here, it says, Command those who are rich in the age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches. Now, in one translation, it says in uncertain times. Now, I would say that that is really relevant to our lives right now. Anybody else feel uncertainty right now? Boy, I know I have. I'm sure you have as well. We're living in times where there's more questions than there are answers. There's, these are times where there's so much negativity, where anxiety and fear are trying to run rampant through our society. We're living in times where we don't, we don't even know when we're going to be able to freely leave our houses and go back to work or go to football games or basketball games, go back to church. There's a lot of uncertain times. There's uncertain riches, things that we had valued in the past that I think we might be realizing right now, they didn't really carry much value. But you know what? The scripture says something about that. Watch what it says. It says, command those who are rich in the age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches or times, but trust in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Trust in God, God is love, who gives us all the right things, the things that pertain unto life and godliness to do what? To enjoy. Now it goes on to say this, watch this. It says, let them do good. Be rich in good works, ready to give and willing to share. Isn't that amazing? So God says, if you receive from him, then do good. If you're gonna be rich in something, be rich in good works. You know, that reminds me of James chapter two when it says, faith without benevolent acts or good deeds is dead. You know, what good is our faith if we can't be kind? 
What good is our faith if we can't show love? What good is our faith to say we've been forgiven, but we won't forgive? What good is our faith to say we've been accepted, but we won't accept other people? Faith without corresponding action, without benevolence, without generosity is dead. The Bible says it's a mockery. But why? Because too often Christians have been Christians in word and not deed. And Jesus here is telling us, let us do good. Let us be rich in good works, ready to give, ready, anticipating giving. And it says, being willing to share. You know, I've been so proud of our church in the last few weeks. And I don't say that with the wrong type of pride. I say it with the right type of pride. I've been proud of our church. The way our church has stepped up and partnered with the food bank. I think we're over 17,000 boxes of food now given in our community. We've made over 120 deliveries to people who are elderly or immune deficient and couldn't leave their house. And we've taken them food and groceries. We've, uh, you'll see in the next few days, a major announcement about a giveaway we've done with masks, and you'll see that be released. We've helped single moms who couldn't get diapers or wipes, and we were able to bless them. We've counseled and prayed with hundreds of people in the last few weeks. Why? Because God tells us, let them do good. Be rich in good works, ready to give. You know, I believe that this is the true heart of our church. I believe that because our church for many years has valued doing good, who, contrary to what people have said about us, are not rich in money, but we have been rich in good works, ready to give. Our church for many years has responded when society needs things, ready to give. And that's exactly what we've been doing in these past few weeks. And I believe with all my heart that it's that spirit that God has anointed and he allowed us through that spirit to be positioned during this time to be the light of the world in our city to where now the community has looked to abundant living to help them, to provide for them, to pray for them, to be a place or a ministry of hope and answers for them. And I thank God for it. But truly, church, it's because of you. It's because of your heart that you have received the love of God and allowed that love of God to produce generosity in your life. You know, we had an amazing thing happen last week, and we have this awesome video that I just want to show you about some of the things that don't always make it onto social media, but they're happening on a weekly basis through our church family. Would you enjoy this video, please? Hey, church family, we're here at the grocery store. We're gonna buy some groceries for a couple um, that came to us through our care at ALFC and um, a lady reached out to them to see if they were in need and come to find out they were in dire need of groceries. Um, So Pastor Jared reached out and asked um, some of the families to see if we can go and grocery shop. So here we are. Um, I think it's a privilege that I get to do this. um, And I just wanted to thank you for your giving and your generosity, we're able to do this for them. We're here outside the Rodriguez family about to deliver the food and I'm a little excited. I I love being able to give and do this. Again, it's because of our giving family that makes this possible. Thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you so much for your um, faithfulness and doing um, what God has put in your heart to do. And if you are in need of food, our food giveaways are open um, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday on our Westside campus. And if you aren't able to come to our giveaways and you're in need or if you're in need of prayer, anything like that, email care at alfc.com. We have pastors available to pray for you. We have people, um, families such as us that are available to bring food to you. So just reach out. Don't stay in need. Thanks. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Dios te bendiga. Bye-bye. 
Wow, wasn't that incredible? Wasn't that incredible to see this family in our, in our team step up immediately on a Friday night and go out and buy those groceries and take them to that family in Socorro? You know, they called me and uh, they said, you know, Jared, they were so elderly and so weak, you know, that we had to take them into the house. You know, and we had told them, don't, don't go in the house, you know, social distancing, but we bought them so much stuff that we had to. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Isn't that just awesome? Now, listen to what the message translation says of 1 Timothy 6, verse 18 and 19. It says, tell them to do good, to be rich in helping others, to be extravagantly generous. You know, that's one of the values of our church is extreme generosity. And that's what, where we got it from. You know, I think that the type of generosity that God inspires in us is extravagant. It's extreme. It's above and beyond type generosity. It's going the extra mile. It's going to the store on a Friday night to deliver goods and food to a family in Socorro. It's being out at the West Side Church at 6 a.m. to set up the boxes of food. It's providing for a single mom. It's paying someone's electric bill so it doesn't get cut off. It's praying in the middle of the night for someone who's hurting. That's extreme generosity. And I'm telling you, church, we will not stop. We will not stop. And I encourage you to take it upon yourself. Check on your senior citizen neighbors. Call them. If the Lord inspires someone into your mind, call them. Ask them how they're doing. Check on them. You know, your call, your encouraging word may be what pulls them out of sadness or depression. You reaching out and maybe taking them something from the store or getting them toilet paper or something, you may be what inspires a spark of hope back into their lives. And listen to what the scripture says. Do good, be rich in helping others, be extravagantly generous. And if they will do that, They'll build up a treasury that will truly last. Listen, listen, gaining life that is truly life. Oh my goodness. Life that is truly life. God gave, God loved, God gave, we receive. If we love and we give, we still receive. Isn't that amazing how God is? Isn't it incredible? God gave, God, excuse me, God loved, he gave, we receive. We love, we give, others receive, but we also receive. And what do we receive? We receive the life that is truly life. And what is it? It's the life God wants us to have. The grace-filled life, the abundant life, the eternal life. Life that is truly life, joy, peace, and happiness, love, favor, and success, forgiveness, and freedom, life that is truly life. So let's determine right now to do good, to be extravagant in our generosity. Let's determine to be kind and loving. Let's determine to be beneficial to those around us. Let's determine to be encouraging. Let's determine to pray, to support, to love, and to give. During this season, don't let your, the generous life, the life that is truly life, go dormant on the inside of you. That's quite a thought, isn't it? It's quite a thought. Don't let the generous life, the life that is truly life, go dormant on the inside of you. And that's exactly what the world wants. The world will tell you right now to pull in, to pull back, to be stingy, to only think about yourself, to only take care of number one. And I'm not telling you not to. Of course, you got to take care of yourself and your family. But you know what? You can also be generous. You can be kind. You can be loving. You don't have to be stingy. You don't have to pull back. What an opportunity we have as Christians to rise up and show the world who we really are. 
to show the world our good deeds, our good works, to show the world that we are not just Christians in word, we are Christians in deed. We are Christians in love. We are Christians in generosity. What an opportunity we have to rise up and show people Jesus. And how do you show people Jesus? You show it through love, and that love produces generosity. This is our moment. This is our time. It's our time, church, to step up. It's our time to show that we love, to show that we forgive, to show that we care. It's our time when negativity arises, that we arise with hope and faith. It's our time when people around us are discouraged to encourage them. It's our time when people are worried to remind them that our trust is not in the world, but our trust is in the Lord. We lean not on our own understanding, but we lean on the goodness in God. It's our time, church, to rise up, to step up, and to be the hands and feet of Jesus on our streets, in our neighborhoods, on our jobs, in our city, and in our households. It's our time. This is our moment. Let's not let this season pass us by, and we didn't show the love of God. Let's step up, church. Let's rise up. Let's take advantage of this season and show people the love of God through our good deeds, through our kindness, through our forgiveness, through our good acts. Let's go do good. One more scripture before we pray. Ephesians 5, verse 1 and 2. It says, watch what God does and do it. Like children who learn proper uh, proper behavior from their parents. Mostly, what God does is love you. So, watch what God does and do it. God loves you, so you love. Keep company with him and learn a life of love. His love wasn't cautious, but extravagant. He didn't love to get something from us, but to give everything of himself to us. Love like that. That's love. Love is not to get something from someone. Love is to give something to someone else. You know, I believe this should be the posture of our heart right now. This right here, to be ruled by love and generosity is to be like God. So let's be generous. Let's be generous with our time, with our attention, with our affection. Let's be generous with our words of encouragement, with our acts of love and kindness. Let's be generous with our forgiveness. Mostly, let's be generous with godliness, faith, hope, grace, and love. I believe generosity is actually our true nature. And as we go through life, the world tries to pull that nature out of us. But let's not let that happen. I believe that's why the Bible says in Acts 20, verse 35, that it is truly more blessed to give than to receive. Why? Because if we are children of God, we, are, we have God's love, and God loved, therefore he gave. Have you ever given something to someone and it made you just as happy or even happier than it made them? Why is that? Because you were born to love. You were born to be generous. Let's choose the life that is truly life. You know, I pray this message helped you tonight. I pray it encouraged you. I pray it reminded you of the power of God's love. I pray also that it inspired you, that you can show the love of Christ, that you can be generous in your life in many ways. You know, the world will tell you that generosity is just about money, but the truth is most of the time, generosity is not about money. It's about your time, your attention, your affection, your kind word, your helping hand. Generosity is a powerful force. And I just pray that you were inspired today. Now, there was a scripture I mentioned earlier And it was out of John 3, 16. And it said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life or eternal life. Have you ever made Jesus Lord of your life? Do you have a relationship with God? Did you know that you could? Did you know that you should? Did you know 
that everything God has done from the very first moment of time until this moment right here, right now, was done and designed for you to have a relationship with him, not religion. Man created religion. God just wants to have a relationship with you. And he does it by you having a personal connection with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you do that by choosing to believe that he is Lord and asking him to come into your life. And he will. And upon doing so, two amazing things happen. Number one, you receive eternal life. That means that you become a part of God's family. Your sins are forgiven. Your past is washed away. And when your time here on earth is up, that you will go to heaven. And that's really what it's all about. That alone makes this the most important decision you can ever make in your life. Why? Because it's the only decision that has eternal consequence. But God didn't stop with eternal life. God also wants you to have the abundant life. I mentioned it during the service. It's a life of love, joy, peace, and happiness, a life of hope and faith, a life of victory, deliverance, and success, and so much more. I really don't have time to explain all of it other than to say that God wants you to love your life And he wants to put you on a path where he leads you and guides you to a place where your life is filled with fulfillment and satisfaction. Have you ever made Jesus Lord of your life? If not, I'm gonna invite you to pray a prayer with me in a moment and you will become a child of God and you will live the rest of your days here on earth knowing that you're gonna go to heaven and you will also live with God on your side and never against you. Or maybe, You're listening to me, and at some point you had a relationship with God, but you disconnected for whatever reason. I like to put it this way. Maybe you just know in your heart you're not right with God. You might believe in God or even have an awareness of God, but you just know you're not right with God. He's not Lord of your life. He's You're not serving Him. You don't have a relationship with Him. You're not right with God, but guess what? You can get right. You're watching tonight, you're broken, you're hurt, you're lost, you're tormented. You don't have to stay that way. Why don't you let Jesus come into your life and put you on a different path and let him help you with all of that and take those wrongs and make them right. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lead you through a prayer. If you wanna make Jesus Lord of your life for the first time or just reconnect with him, you just wanna get right with God tonight, say this prayer with me. Repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I give you my life. I give you my heart and my soul, and I make Jesus my Lord and Savior. Forgive my sins, put my past behind me, and take me to the life you have for me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer tonight, let me be the first to welcome you to the family of God. You are now a child of God, and you will be for eternity. We'd love to connect with you. You're gonna see a number come up on the screen right now. Text us if you prayed that prayer. If I could tell you a couple things, let me tell you this. Get a Bible. If you don't have one, we'll be happy to send you one. Or if you have an iPad or any type of smartphone, download a Bible app. I use Version Bible app. It's free, it's amazing. Get a Bible though and start reading it. 20 minutes a day, it'll change your life. Number two, stay connected with us. Normally, I would tell you to come back to church. Obviously, we can't come to our physical buildings right now, but come back to church. Watch us again. Maybe watch us Saturday or Sunday. Watch us next Wednesday, but stay connected and let us help you in your walk with God, in your relationship with Jesus. Thank you again for becoming a child of God. Listen, before we go any further, again, I'm so glad you joined us at church. Let's pray before we go on with our nights. Heavenly Father, I just lift up every person watching tonight, wherever they are, whether they're in El Paso, in Austin or Lockhart or around the world. Father, I pray for them. And I believe that your love is abounding towards them. I believe that you are affecting them in an incredible way. Lord, be with them in this time. Help them, lead them, guide them, give them creative ideas and solutions inside their family, on their jobs, in their businesses. Lord, I believe they have favor in everything that they do. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you again.
Wow, what an incredible service, right? What an incredible message on the power of love. Hey, can we just make a commitment this week to live in the power of love, to reject fear, to reject stress, and live in the power of God's love? You know, there are some of you that are watching today, and today you said yes to the love of Jesus for the very first time. We call that salvation. We call that being born again. If you said yes today for the very first time for Jesus to come into your life, listen, we'd love the opportunity to take next steps in this new life life with you, this new love life with you. There's a number on the screen right now. Would you text us? Let us know that you said yes today, and we would love the opportunity to take the next walk with you. Also, we love walking with our church family. We love caring for our church family. If you're going through some just complexity and times are just complicated right now, listen, you're not supposed to go through that by yourself. Let us come next to you and just be a support for you. Would you let us know how we can serve you and how we can help you by sending an email to care at lfc.com. You know, our church really does care for our church family, really does care about our city, and we're still being a blessing to our city through our food giveaway at the West Side church. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays, we're giving food to thousands of people every single week. And so if you need any food, would you please come by and let us serve you? Let us be a blessing to you. Make sure you get there as early as you can so that we can serve you. Also, listen, stay connected to church every day. We love that you're here on Wednesdays. We love that you jump in at church at home on Sundays. But there's something for us every single day. Every day there's a prayer. There's daily devotionals that our pastors do for us. There's tons of content on the app. So Let's make a commitment, yeah? Let's stay connected every single day to our walk with Jesus and with our church family, all right? Well, listen, we love you so much. We're believing the best for you. Can't wait to see you next time. Church at home. Come on, let's go. Have a great week.